When you hear the word sales, what comes to mind? Do you think something good or do you think salespeople are sleazy, untrustworthy? A lot of people, truth be told, have a negative connotation when it comes to sales and salespeople. That can be the case, that can be true. Salespeople can be untrustworthy if they act untrustworthy. But the truth of the matter is sales in its core is simply persuading someone to do something that you want in your business. And it can be used for good and it can be used for bad. It can be used to genuinely help people like it is in massage or it can be used to rip people off, which those people does happen with anything. There are good and bad operators in every business and every industry. But the truth is rebooking clients is sales. Recommending and trying to get your customer to get an upgrade that you know can help them is sales. Recommending your customer and trying to persuade them to get a product from you that you sell that you know can help them is sales. At the end of the day, it pays to be good at sales in business and not just for you to make more money, but for you to be able to help your customer and your clients more. How do we get good at sales, you might ask? Well, some people are naturally born with the ability to persuade people. They're naturally outgoing. Um, whereas other people have to work at it more. And at the end of the day, whether you are naturally persuasive and outgoing or you're not, it's good to understand a structure because everyone can get good at sales. Everyone can get better at sales. In this video, I'm going to give you a six step process to selling anything. It's just a framework that you can have in your head to understand how to persuade someone, how to sell someone. And this is gonna help you and your customers more. Before we get into it, if you haven't watched any of my videos, my name is Kurt Simpson and I have a 10 therapist clinic in Australia that I run with my wife. And the purpose of these videos is just to help other therapists out there who also wanna be successful. Let's get into it. Step one with sales is building trust and connecting with your client. Before you persuade anyone, the person you're trying to persuade or suggest things to, whether it's a service or a product or a rebooking, they need to know, like, and trust you. In the case of massage, I've read a couple books about communication and getting people to like you, which have helped me a lot in my life. A couple books I'd recommend are How to Win Friends and Influence People, that's a basic. The second one is, I think it's 92 Tips to Talk to Anyone by Leo Lowndes. There's another one called The Like Switch. Those are the three I've read. You're gonna get good tips out of any of them, but that's the first step in sales, getting people to like you, feel comfortable around you, trust you. Practical things you can do are smiling when someone walks in the door to your clinic, is having a nice clinic, a nicely laid out place so it looks trustworthy. Smile, greet someone by their name, offer them a glass of water, just be warm and welcoming to them. Just some basic, basic tips to start. Step two is understanding your customers' needs and preferences. When it comes to sales or anything like that, people don't care about what you're trying to say to them unless they think you care about them or unless they know you care about them. How do you do that? The main thing you can do is ask questions seem be genuinely interested in their answers listen more than you talk ask questions ask follow-up questions to those questions dig deeper recap what they say back to them um, so they know you listened and give eye contact and show interest this is done in the consultation part of the appointment basically this is where you i've got a whole training on rebookings and stuff and what to do in consultations but basically you can just sit down with them start asking about why they've come to see you today where they're feeling pain or if it's pain they're feeling or if it's stress depending on the type of massage you're doing you want to ask different questions follow-up questions and then trying to understand their problem, like truly understand their problems and what have caused their problems. And if it's a long-term thing, a short-term thing, you just wanna ask a lot of questions. Step three is presenting your product or service in a way that addresses your customer's needs and show how it can provide value and help them. No matter what you're trying to 
sell a massage customer, whether it's uh, rebooking, getting them to rebook, whether it's getting them to do a 90 minute massage instead of 60, whether it's to sell them a product at the end, you need to do the first two steps, but the next steps are gonna be different depending on what you're trying to sell them. Once you've understood what their problem is, then it's easy to genuinely match a service or product that you provide that you offer with their with the customer's problems okay so when they tell you their problems you can genuinely say that this is going to help them and this is how it's going to help them and this is why it's going to help them that is critical but you have to do the first two steps before you can genuinely recommend someone and they trust you enough to believe you I just want to take a second to ask you for a small favor if you're finding this video helpful if you could just tap the like button underneath it i'd be really grateful that will tell the youtube algorithm to share this video with more massage therapists around the world. And hopefully that will help them all earn more income, which is what they deserve. Thanks for helping. Step four is handling any objections or addressing any concerns that the customer may have. This is going to be different depending once again on if you're trying to sell them another session, a membership package, a foam roller, pain cream, or body lotion. It's gonna be different for everyone, right? But sometimes, even if you've done a really good job of building trust, understanding the customer's problems, and offering the correct service or product, sometimes they might have hesitation in going through with the sale. It could be you could be selling a membership and they might be like, oh, I don't know if I can do this right now because da da da. And then this is where you ask questions to find out why they don't want to follow through with it, whether it's buying an expensive cream you've got for them or an expensive item or rebooking with an upgrade or a mem like anything, anything. People have objections. People have reasons why they don't want to do it. And sometimes, a lot of the time, actually, if you get good at this, you can convince them, you can change their mind because sometimes it's just a matter that you haven't explained everything enough you haven't explained how it can help them. And so for the example of a rebooking, for example, someone says, I don't know if I can rebook. I don't know if I can come back in two weeks. And you say, oh, how come? And they might say, because the time doesn't work and then find another solution for them. Overcoming objections is done by two things. Finding another solution, allaying their fears about maybe they might be not sure they want to get hot stones done in the next session because they don't like think it's going to be too hot or they had a bad experience last time with hot stones. And you say, no, we're very careful. We keep our hot stones at a certain temperature. There's a lot of different examples about what their objections could be based on the problems, but you're basically trying to find out the real reason why they don't want to do something. And then you try and overcome those objections by allaying their fears, edu educating them, giving them an alternative solution, etc. Those are the basics. Step five is closing the sale and securing the customer's commitment to purchase. This is just the transaction, whether it's putting the sale through, whether it's uh, for a membership, getting them to sign the membership documents, stuff like that. That's very basic. And step six is following up with the customer to ensure satisfaction and address any issues that may arise. So a lot of people think when you're selling something, that's the end of the sale. And to be honest, most businesses do this. They don't follow up. But if you do follow up, you're going to stand out and your customer's gonna love you even more and they're gonna to wanna to buy more things from you because they know you care. You're not just trying to sell them stuff. So this is and it's very basic. After someone comes into a massage with you, you rebook them, blah, blah, blah. The next day, check in with them, send them a message. Give them a call, ask them how they're feeling, ask them how that problem was that they came in. That is the most basic thing you can do, but just make a note in your diary to check in with the people who came in to see you the day before. It takes two minutes and your customers will love you for it because they know you care. That's the six step sales process. Let me recap quickly. Number one, build trust and connection with the potential client. Step two, understand the customer's needs and preferences. Step three, present the product or service you are trying to sell them in a way that addresses your customer's needs and shows how it can provide them value, why it's good for them. Number four is handling objections and addressing any concerns the customer may have before proceeding. Step five is closing the sale, getting them to commit to the purchase. Step six is follow up with the customer. There it is, there's the six steps for selling. It's not that scary, it's not sleazy. As you can see, selling is just helping people. I hope this has helped you. And if you have any questions about sales, let me know that this has helped you in some way. I'd love to hear 
underneath this video in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.